my name is Rachel Corey, and I'm excited because today we're going to be covering all things heat presses. So we're going to start uh, and really dive into all of our presses. So right now I'm in our showroom in Michigan. Um, so I can't have all the presses on at one time, but you will hear I have our air fusion on, so you will hear um, the compressor a little bit. So I apologize in advance. Um, but in between, we'll be turning on and off so you can see the different features um, of all of the presses. So we'll be covering, as I said, our two craft presses. We'll be covering a press from our Max line, and then we'll be covering all of our Hotronics presses. So as many of you know, this is a lot of information. Um, I could talk about each press for probably an hour. Uh, that being said, I'm going to cover some of the highlights and our favorite things, uh, features and benefits about each press. Um, as we're going through, if you have questions, my partner Stacy is on the chat. So if you have questions, plug them into the chat and she'll answer them as we go. And then in between each segment, I'll also be answering questions. So um, just bear with us as we're trying to keep up because I know it can be a lot of information. So um, as I mentioned, we're going to talk about every single heat press that we have in the showroom. Um, but before we do that, I want to talk about the three ingredients to a perfect application. Um, and here at Stalls, we really, really encourage people to pay attention to your time, your temperature, and your pressure. So all of our presses are going to have functionalities to read out your time, temperature, and pressure. So this is important because as you're using different materials from Stalls, every material is going to have a very unique application instruction. So whether you're printing with CAD cut or CAD prints or um, Transfer Express products, they're all gonna have unique settings that's gonna be their specific time, temperature, and pressure to withstand the lifespan of that product. So not every product is gonna be compatible on every substrate, which is why we, uh, we help you guys through that process. But with each product, you will get these application instructions. So I want you to make sure you're paying attention to that and the different um, functionality functionalities on each press that allow you to have these um, recipe or ingredients for a perfect application. Um, so we can't get super close because you won't be able to see the whole press, but the first press I want to talk about is our craft press, also known as the pink press. So if you are a regular around here, I'm sure you've seen Jenna using this. This is her go-to press in all of her videos, so you might be familiar with it. Um, this is going to be our perfect press for craft and home hobbyists. So reason being is because it is uh, one of our smaller presses. So it is a nine by 12 play, uh, platen. Um, so easy to just pick up. I think it's 30 or 32 pounds. So easy to move around your house. If you don't want it out all the time or in your shop, or if you want to travel with it, it's easy to just grab and go. Um, some of our other presses, as you can see, are a little bit bigger. And so they're not as user friendly if you're trying to just plug and play with them. Um, but easy to just throw on your dining room table due to the size of it. So with this press, when you clamp it down, you'll see here there's a knob, and this is going to be your pressure uh, gauge. So with your craft presses, and this is pretty standard within most craft presses in the industry, is that it's going to be a lot of feel. So you're not going to have a pressure readout that your standard, like, Stahl's Hotronics presses will have. So it's going to be that feel, okay? So when you're printing on a t-shirt versus a sweatshirt, your sweatshirt's obviously going to be a little, a little bit thicker. So you're going to have to adjust your pressure slightly. So we do our pressure in PSI, so pounds per square inch. Um, and typically most products are going to be about a medium. So once you play with it, when you first get it, you'll, you can really feel the hand on it and feel what a medium pressure is going to feel like. Um, so until then, you'll just lefty loosey, righty tighty, pretty standard. So lefty if you want to loosen it up or lighten up your pressure, or right if you want to put more pressure onto it. As you'll hear, when the application time is done, it's going to buzz, and you'll come over and just manually open it. It's really light, um, which is great if you're just doing like a few things here and there. You just come over, pull it up, pull your garment off, and you'll be done. Um, as you'll see when we're pulling, when we're clamping it down, so you'll see up here, you're going to have your temperature readout, so you'll know when your press is completely heated up, and then you'll also have a time readout. And as it counts down, when it gets to the last second is when it makes the noise to buzz for you to open it, okay? So as you can see, super easy to use. Um, it's not heavy, so it's great for clamping down if you are um, putting it on a table or if you're working, sitting on your floor using it, it's a great press. Um, 
Another functionality besides just your time, temperature, and pressure for these presses is threadability. So this press, although it is small, you are able to thread on it. So, and this is truly a matter of preference and how people want to use their press. So you can either take your shirt and lay it right on the press as such, okay? Or, Stahl's terminology, you can do, you can thread it through your press, so that's the threadability. So you can thread this through, and you can see, so your garment's hanging off here, so that if you have anything like a, a heat-sensitive garment and you don't want to press both sides, or if you're worried about scorching, you'll thread it through and really eliminate all of those risks. Um, so you do have some different options with threadability here. So this is a great size, though, guys, if you're doing T-shirts, tote bags, uh, a lot of Etsy shop owners have this press because it's just easy to plug and play. Um, so what you'll do when you're setting your um, temperature and your time up here is there's just a button in the middle and it says mode and you'll click mode and you're able to just up and down arrow on it. So super simple to use. There's really uh, not an extenuous uh, user guide on it. So really easy, um, very user friendly and it does not take a ton of training. Um, so I'm going to turn this one off just so we can keep rolling. And I'm going to move you guys over here a little bit. Okay, so this press I'm most excited to talk about today. This is our A to Z press. Um, a to Z press is like our newest um, crafted hobbyist press. So one of the best features about this that people love from one of our Hotronics presses is the fact that it can swing away. Okay. So what I mean is you'll swing it away and then it completely frees up your loading zone on your press, okay? So instead of just having your traditional, what I like to call a waffle iron press, where you're just standing in the heat like your pink press, right? So you are really standing there and getting a lot of that heat pumping at you if you're doing a lot of shirts at a time, where this one, you swing it away and you're removing that heat from your works workspace completely, okay? So this is going to be the same. You're going to have your, you guys can see it when I spin it away, your temperature uh, or your pressure gauge is going to be right here. Same thing, lefty-loosey, righty-tighty to give it more or less pressure. And then you're also going to have your temp and time settings on here as well. So this is going to be your manual open as well. So when it comes down, it's counting down on the time that you set for your application. It's going to give you that same buzz as the craft press. And then you'll just come over and lift it up. Okay, so super easy to use. Um, again, the heat-free workspace is phenomenal. Um, and then the, my next favorite feature about this is it has interchangeable platens. Okay, so for those of you new here, this is what we call a platen. A lot of people refer to them as plates. Um, so these are all going to be interchangeable on this press. So they're going to have different sizes that you have availability to buy. So you can either buy... Um, with this press, you can either purchase just the press or you can purchase it in a package with other platens as well. So if you're familiar with our Hotronics presses, then you know that there's a little lever that typically you would interchange with. This one just has a little screw on the bottom, which is kind of hard to see. Um, but you'll just lift this off. And you can put on a smaller platen. So if you're trying to get a really niched area or a unique finish on, you know, a small women's fitted shirt or a onesie, you can put a smaller platen on here and then it just pops in and out of place. So this is a phenomenal feature because it is not featured on any other craft press in the industry. It's great because you're able to grow with it and you're not just stuck um, into one size like you would be with other craft presses. So it does have a lot of versatility for your printing needs. Oh, there we go. Okay, so you're not gonna pull it or lift it up. Again, it's only gonna have that swing away option instead of the waffle iron. Um, digital temperature and time readouts and then your manual pressure, which is pretty universal for all craft presses. Um, phenomenal press though, and the interchangeable platens is just a game changer at a press this size. Um, so this is definitely, if you're looking for a craft press, and it really kind of depends on your budget too. So this pink press is going to run you about, I think it's three or $310. And then this press is going to be $699 um, with just the press with no other platen. So depending on what your budget is, if you're looking to get into, to see if you get your feet wet with heat printing and see what the hype's all about, if you're just wanting to get something 
going, then this might be the right press for you. But if you have the budget that allows you and you are running your Etsy shop out of your house, or if you have hobbies or just friends that want shirts, this is going to be a universal press that you can really like grow into because of the different functionalities on it. Um, Stacey, do we have questions about either of these presses? So far, so good. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to wheel you guys over here with our beautiful mannequin. Okay, so these are going to be, if you're even a hobbyist or doing crafting, both of these presses are going to be great as well. So if you're wanting something that outside of the A to Z size that you can really grow into, one of these is might be a better option for you. So right here to my right, we have the Max Auto Open, or sorry, Max Clam. And then this is the Hotronics Auto Open. So I have the 11 by 15 platen on this press and I have a 15 by 15 on here. So both of these presses do offer interchangeable platens. Um, so all of these are gonna have a lever right here. All you'll do is flip your lever and pull this platen out and you can interchange it. So there's a lever here, if you guys can see that a little bit better now, that you'll just swip, swap in and out of place. Um, and then you can put something as unique as a shoe platen on here so you can print shoes on this press and then you'll just pop this in pull your lever and you can print shoes so as easy as that where you know sometimes you'd have to buy a different press or you can't print shoes on it because you don't have the capability these presses all are capable to inter swap the platens um, so your max line is going to be a little bit it's got fewer bells and whistles on it than your hot tronics so your max is a great press it's going to have this pressure uh, knob just like the other two presses we showed you. So again, it's going to be a little bit of feel. I don't. I, would, I may have blown a fuse. Um, so when you're using this press, it's going to have a digital and time readout, but it's not going to have a pressure readout. Okay. Where this press, your auto open, this is your Hotronics auto open. What will happen is you're going to have a pressure readout in the corner so you'll know exactly instead of just having to feel the press where you're like oh i think it's a medium i think it's high i think it's low it's going to tell you on a scale from one to ten psi's where you're at so if you're at a medium pressure it's going to say five or six um, and if you're at a high pressure it's going to say nine or ten so you can really gauge and have a way more accurate print because of that both presses are going to have a time and temperature readout on them, so you will know when your press is fully at heat. There's a, there's a lot of presses from the craft press line to this line um, that do not have these readouts, so you're really guessing on temperature, you're guessing on time, and you can use your phone or a stopwatch to record it, but this really takes all a lot of the air out of, um, out of the application. Okay. Do we have questions about these presses? We are doing good on questions right now. Okay. So the nice thing about this press, where I was saying on our craft press that you do have threadability, it's a little bit limited just due to the size of the press. This press, both of these, are going to have full threadability. So you can thread your garment through here. You can thread bags through here. Um, you name it, you can probably thread it, depending on what platen you have on. Um, and then all of these platens, are going to be interchangeable so here we also have and that's super easy okay i'm strong but i'm not super strong so it's not that heavy it's really easy to um, pull these in and out so it's not going to be you have to call somebody to do it for you uh, and just plop them right into place so these buttons are awesome because if you're doing a really niched area so say you're doing a women's fitted garment or a onesie um, or youth sizes if you're threading, you don't want to thread it on a 16 by 20 platen. So if you're doing a smaller garment or a niche area, if I do left chest a lot of times, I'll put them on these smaller platens to really isolate the area. Um, a lot of people will ask me, so this press right here is a 16 by 20 size, and you can see it's um, much larger on the top than this press. This is a 15 by 15. So people ask, what size should I get? What am I, what am I doing? Why is it important? Um, I would say that our 16 by 20 press is the press to go with, okay? So when I first started at Stalls, I remember a sales rep saying, he said, 
They said, why would you buy a 16 by 20 over a 15 by 15 or a 16 by 16? And because it, it's because you can never make this part of the press smaller, but you can, you can never make it smaller or bigger, but you can always make it smaller. Okay. So that meaning you can always change the bottom piece of the press, but you can never make your heating element larger. So this is going to give you the maximum print space. If you have the heat from the top, if you want something smaller, all you have to do is change your bottom platen. But this can never, the heating element can never be changed, if that makes sense. I always thought that was a really handy way of saying it, is that you can always make it um, smaller, but you can never make it bigger. Okay, we good? Questions about these ones? No? Okay, so again, this is your max. And this is your Hottronics auto open, and I have the prices here for you. So the max clam, your 15 by 15 is going to start at a thousand dollars, and then your 16 by 20 is going to be 1250, and then your auto open is going to be 16 by 20 is going to be 1675. So a little bit of a price difference, but based on the pressure um, and just the, the auto open on this, that's the price is it's it's not too crazy when you jump between them for the features that you're going to get on your auto open. Um, a lot of people will use this if you have like a storefront, you know, or if you get easily distracted, or even if you're using this at home and maybe you have kids running around or you have the UPS guy coming to the front door. When you count down this press and it auto opens for you, you can walk away and know that you're never gonna ruin a garment because it's not gonna get scorched or you're not gonna leave a garment under there for two minutes if you forget or you're chasing a kid around the house or if somebody walks into your storefront you're going to eliminate a lot of scorching or any kind of um, user error because it's going to auto open for you. So that's one of the main differences between these presses and why people would choose the Hottronics Auto Clam versus the Max. Okay, so I'm going to move, I'm going to jump over here. I'm just going to wheel you guys with me. Okay, so the next is our Fusion. So this is a Fusion IQ. So this is probably the sm one of the smartest presses we have. So for those of you that have um, iPhones, it has a technology that's very similar to an iCloud. So when you see our presses, it'll say Fusion IQ. The IQ is this brain on the press. So when you turn this press on, it's gonna have um, different profiles that you can set up. So say I'm a shop owner, and I'm out on the road or I'm at a trade show or I'm just not in the office, I'm working from home that day and I have a few users that are printing on this press, you can pre-program profiles into this press. So say Tommy's at the shop printing on it. He, you can track, he'll log into his profile and you can track everything that happens on this press while he is logged in. Um, what's nice is if you wanna know um, productivity, it's great because then you, it's, it's great to like bill people, right? So you can know how many shirts we're printing, how quickly we're printing them. You can tell what um, settings they're using. So if there's an application issue, you can know if it's either the press or the user. Um, so it creates a lot of um, questions or it eliminates a lot of questions when you're trying to figure out if you have an issue or if you wanna increase productivity, you can figure out how much dwell time there is between each press um, from the user standpoint. So this press is great as I covered on the A to Z. So I'm gonna move over here. When you are pressing on the Fusion, you can either clamp it down, just like your standard press, um, or you can swing it, oops, swing it away to really eliminate your um, workspace from being too heated, okay? So when you're sitting in front of a waffle iron press, I keep calling it waffle iron, but that's how, that's my terminology. So when you're sitting in front of that, there's a lot of heat that pumps from the top of the press and you can't ever remove yourself from it. So if you're doing five or 600 shirts at a time, it can get pretty warm. Um, so when you're doing using the swing away, you're really pushing that heat away from the user or you can bring this back over and lock it in place and you can pull it out. So you can draw this out or swing it away. We always tell people not to do both. It is a heavy press and you don't want it to like topple, um, topple over. So two different ways to have a heat-free workspace. Um, and then when you turn it on to all of these, pro all of these presses, the Fusion IQ presses are gonna come pre-programmed with our most popular materials. Actually, they, they, pro they program them with all of them now, but 
all of our materials um, application settings will be in here. So you don't have to worry about time, temperature, and pressure because it'll be in the press. So if you're printing fashion film, you can just go in, you'll go into the user box, click fashion film, and your press will auto adjust to the heat of fashion film and it'll auto have the time in there. So as you'll see, you'll have this knob up here again to do the pressure. Um, and you'll hear when you go to fashion film, it's a medium pressure. It's going to say your targeted pressure. So you'll have to manually set it, but it'll have it on here what it's supposed to be set at. And then whenever you clamp it down, and unfortunately, I think I blew a few, so I can't turn these on. But when you clamp it down, it'll show you, it'll read out the pressure that it's at. And if it's not at a medium pressure or a light pressure or heavy pressure, it'll have it uh like a warning arrow next to it. So it'll say you need to adjust your pressure, uh, which is a great feature too, so that you're not just clamping down heavy pressure on these garments. Um, other favorite feature about this press is that when you first turn it on and you plug in whatever temperature you want it to be at, it'll say 19 minutes remaining, or it'll have a countdown from, from right that moment to when it'll fully be heated up. So. If I'm printing samples for somebody or if I get into the shop in the morning and want to answer a few emails, I know I have 20 minutes until this press is up and running. Um, so that's phenomenal because you, you can really just go do things and not have to sit at your press and hope it's at 300 or hope it's going to get to 350. You'll really know when it's going to reach that point. Um, and you'll see these presses are all on, um, I'll wheel you guys back in a minute, but they're on our equipment carts which is great. So this is not a light press. It is uh, a little bit heavier. It's not something I'm just going like, to pick up and move around. So I always recommend putting on an equipment cart or on a movable table, um, but this cart does have wheels on it, so you can wheel it in and out of a room if you have uh, if you have this press at home or if you have it in a shop and you want to move it around. It's a lot easier if you have it on an equipment cart with the wheels on it. Um, and I think this wonderful press is what blew our fuse here. So this is our air fusion. So this is gonna be, oh, hang on, make them over here. This is gonna be like almost our Cadillac of presses, okay? So our air fusion does run off of an air compressor. And as you'll notice, it does have a different layout than this press where you have like every other press we've seen has a clamp on it. This doesn't. So this press, I tell people, is like pretty much fatigue free, okay? Um, it has the same Fusion IQ brain as the one we just talked about. And what you'll do is you'll see these, there's two little white buttons on the sides of the press, and you'll just clamp this down when you're ready to apply. It's going to clamp down, and then when the application is done, it's going to release itself, and then it's going to spin away on its own, okay? When you're done with your application, there's a pedal on the ground that looks like this. And when it's done, so it's going to swing away by itself, and you have unloaded your garment, you've loaded your next one, you've put your transfers on it, um, you're going to press the pedal, and it's just going to bring this head swinging back, okay? So it's, again, like I said, completely fatigue-free. It's an awesome feature. Um, if you're in a large production facility, this is most likely going to be the right press for you because of the um, air part of it. So this does, like I said, run off of an air compressor, um, but you're really not going to hurt yourself. We have a lot of people, you know, at trade shows that come in, they say, I have a bad back. I don't, I can't stand there and just clamp and press down all day. Um, and they love this press because you literally just come up and press two buttons and move about your day. Um, so this, like I said, is going to have the profile settings, the same as the Fusion IQ. And then it's going to have all of your pre-programmed settings inside of it too. So you can choose um, different things on this press if you want it to dwell, if you want everything to be manual. So if you don't want it to auto swing away, you can press the pedal to make it swing away. So while it has a lot of these bells and whistles, you can also modify them to what works in best in your shop. Um, do we, Stacey, do you have any questions about either of these two presses? Yes, we do have some coming in. Okay. Um, Karen wants to know if she were to um, order a heat press, do you know how long it takes to ship out and what the shipping time looks like? Okay, so right now, um, thank you, COVID, we are a little... Uh, further out on shipping. So right now we're roughly three to four weeks shipping. They all, all of our presses are US made. Um, so they will be shipping out of Pennsylvania. That being said, we do have demo equipment. So any of these presses too, that you can buy from our showrooms that are gently used. 
And then the other question I received, um, if you could talk a little bit more about interchangeable platens or attachments. Um, somebody was looking to do different items with t-shirts, mugs, and hats. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess just knowing, I know with like hard goods, like mugs, we'd probably do sign vinyl. Um, and then hats, I know you're gonna be talking about that in a little bit, but anything else you could recommend for somebody who wants to do a variety of um, materials and items? Yeah, so let me, I'm gonna wheel you over here because I have a platen set up on this press that I wanna show you, so. Come walk with me. Okay, so this is our dual air fusion and on this is our hat fill platen. Okay, so when we're talking platens, if you're doing a, if you're gonna buy a 16 by 20 press, it's gonna come with a 16 by 20 platen on it and that's the press, um, no extra platens included, okay? So then if you're doing smaller youth garments, like I said, women's shirts, a lot of bachelorette parties or something like that, um, youth shirts, I'm gonna say you're 11 by 15 due to the threadability, so you're not gonna stretch that shirt out as you're threading it onto the press. Um, all of our, as I'm talking to you about the platens though, all of our platens have specific names to them, but they're also very vertible, um, versatile. So this is our hat bill platen, okay? So you'll put like the under the bill hat here and you can press four at a time. I've also seen people put so like tube tops, tube socks on here, print four left chests on here, and really maximize your print uh, print time so you can hit four instead of one at a time. Um, we have a leg and sleeve platen that, when we go back over there, I'll show you, but it's a six by 20 platen, and it uh, gives you that really thin space though, so if you wanna print, you know, people wanna do the, uh, you know, universities on the back, that college print from shoulder to shoulder, that's a phenomenal um, platen for it. And then if you want to print down the leg of like sweatpants or dance or cheer, that's a great platen because you don't always want to just shove that on a 16 by 20 if you have a really thick sweatpant or a unique garment. Um, the other reason you would use interchangeable platens besides for just the garment size is for zippers and um, buttons or anything that might melt, okay? So if you have, um, a lot of people right now are printing on jackets and raincoats. So if you're printing like left chest here, I don't wanna scorch all my buttons down the front of the shirt. So you're gonna put a smaller platen, you know, a six by six platen, and isolate this one area so that when you're putting this whole shirt on something like a 16 by 20, it's gonna melt or potentially melt your zippers or buttons on that. Um, people run into that issue with briefcases, with duffel bags, so really isolating the area and then also to not, to eliminate any kind of scorching. So if you aren't using the right platen, then you could have scorching or that old school heat box that you're getting around your transfers. Um, so your platens are really gonna eliminate those issues for you. I think, does that answer the question? I kind of went way into it. I think so. We have a few more questions coming in too. Um, Karen wrote that she got an 11 by 15 a couple months ago and it's already coming unglued from the metal. Okay. Um, and she wants to know if there is, she said Teflon cover, but I think she means the, um, yeah. platen covers. She yeah. wants to know if there is any available right now for 11 by 15. Okay. They are available. So if you guys drop in here, Stacey's going to drop the product pages too. Um, but you'll also put our customer service line on there and they can help you quickly place an order. So as soon as we're done on here, you can call 1-800, the number four, and then stalls, S-T-A-H-L-S, -S, um, and that'll take you right to our customer service, and they're here and ready to answer the phone, and they can get that order placed for you. Um, but what they're talking about, so when you get a platen, like you've seen on any of these, your platen's gonna have this like rubber coating on it, right? So this is like the actual body of the platen. It does not matter how diligent you are, how careful you are. Um, eventually over time, this is gonna chip, okay? Just because it is, it's it's rubber, right? It's not steel, it's not gonna, it's gonna um, not have the best lifespan if you don't properly protect it, okay? So again, like I said, it does not matter how, how careful you are, it will happen uh, and it'll just crumble. So we sell these platen covers and it's just, I mean, completely fine with the heat. You just cover it on, it cinches on in the back, 
And then this is gonna protect the lifespan of your platen. So if you're using it for 10 years and you have this, this cover on it, you're gonna be absolutely fine because it's gonna protect that, that foam rubber part of the platen. Um, so yes, to answer your question, you can order it, but that is why that is important. Um, the only one I think we don't have one for is for the shoe platen. And quite frankly, we don't have customers right now that are printing 600 of those a day, so we don't really have a need for it yet, but we can always um, help you out if you feel like you need a platen cover for that. Is there, you said there was a few questions, or did I cover that? I think we're good. I'm doing my best to answer more that are in the comment section. Did you cover the cost already on the air fusion? Otherwise, I can pull that. So the air fusion is, so you, get, you can either do a tabletop or a pedestal. I'm just gonna show you. So this is gonna be on your pedestal, okay? So that's gonna be, your pedestal one's gonna be $4,400, or if you just get the fusion and you, the air fusion and you put it on a table, um, cause it can't just float by itself, it doesn't have a stand right underneath it. So if you put it on the tabletop, then that's gonna be $4,000. And these prices I'm giving you are all base, um, bare bones, just the press itself without any accessories included with it. So we do have online packages that cover additional platens, or if you want to mix and match and add stuff to it, then we do have special pricing for that as well. Um, so let's cover this press real quick while we're right here. So this is our dual air fusion, and this is the, the Cadillac of presses, okay? So this press is going to be almost identical to the Air Fusion, except it has two presses on it. So this head will come over and print on both sides. So what you'll do is if you have a, produ a production facility that's gonna accommodate a press at this size that runs off of an air compressor, um, and you have the bandwidth uh, for work to do it, I think this press is phenomenal because you can double your efficiency on it. So while this side is pressing, Okay, so it's going to press down on this platen. You have your shirt loaded. You're over here loading another shirt. And then when this time is up, it's going to come over and press this shirt. You take this one off and have it. So you're pressing two shirts in the time that you traditionally would press one shirt. So that's amazing um, just for production purposes that you can maximize your time. Um, the other great thing about this press is it has a laser alignment system built in. So it's on both sides of the press. So this is great because I don't know about you guys, but doing printing on a left chest is very hard or printing straight on a shirt can be very challenging. And to do it quickly to maximize your time and accurately so that it's uh, straight every time can be very difficult. And the press doesn't do it for you. So it's really up to the user to make sure that you are being diligent and placing it straight on the garment. This laser alignment system, when you turn it on, it's going to shoot a laser here. So when, as long as your user is loading the shirt on the same way every time, there's gonna be a laser that shows where to put that transfer at. Uh, so there's 100% accuracy. So this is a phenomenal tool, or if you have two or three placements on a shirt, you can move the lasers around and really like get that unique placement and make sure that's accurate every time. Um, this is a phenomenal feature, and if you do like the laser alignment, we do. this is the only press that it comes on um, built into the press, but we do sell a standalone that you can place next to any press too. So if you have a person that, or a, you know, or you're doing it, or you have somebody else that's working for you, that um, sorry, I have an air compressor decompressing. Um, but if you have a uh, user that's printing left chest all day, or names on the back and the numbers below it, you can set the lasers to line up on that. And then you can also get, like I said, the standalones for other presses. So really helps the accuracy in your printing when you're doing multiple runs at a time. Cause not everybody has the time like me to pull it off, look at it, tape it in place, put it back on. Oh, it moved a little bit and then you can move it around. So this really is a, a phenomenal tool. So you can buy it. It comes either on this press or by itself. Um, okay. And this press is gonna be um, $7,300 for the press itself. And then again, you can buy interchangeable platens for it. So as long as you're printing the same material, you know, you can do uh, a shirt on one side and then a pant sleeve or a pant leg on the other side if you're printing the same material, which is great. So if you're doing like 
soccer warm-ups or like a sporting good warm-up shirt or jerseys you can do multiples at a time and not have to just do t-shirts and then just do the leg and sleeve um, or half bill so a lot of versatility with this press um, but like i said this is our cadillac of presses so that one's phenomenal and again it has this um the foot pedal that the air fusion has so that you can um, push the head back and forth yourself manually too Okay, so I'm going to show you guys my favorite press. I saved the best for last. And this is our 360 hat press. Okay, so for those of you that are not familiar, so I'm kind of looping back to the platen question. So we have interchangeable platens that are really going to cover a lot of your um, decoration needs. However, we face the challenge of hats a lot and why we can't print hats on one of these flat presses and that's exactly why is because it's flat okay so this is your 360 hat press and you'll see here your platen is going to be curved at the top okay and that's because you can't smash a cap down on a flat press because then it's just going to smash it and it's not really going to adhere to your hat all the way okay so this press is very unique and it's the only press in the market that really does what it does because unlike all of your traditional presses that we've gone through today they all are producing heat from the top, but not from the bottom. This press has built-in heat from the bottom. So you're gonna have bottom heat and top heat. So a few reasons this is important. Your bottom heat is going to eliminate scorching. It's gonna eliminate crease marks, specifically on like your six panel hats. Um, and then it's also, when you use those dimensional products. So if you're using leather patches, embroidered patches, um, we have a flex style that is our three dimensional. They're thick, they're um, thick transfer items. So in order to activate the adhesive all the way, you have to activate it from the bottom because if you're trying to apply it with only top heat, that, you know, that leather patch is going to be thick or that 3D embroidery patch is going to be thick and it's not going to adhere all the way. So the trick to getting the right application is to use the bottom heat. So on here, when you turn this on, it's going to have the Fusion IQ brain, so that iCloud mentality where you can um, preset all of your programs in there. And then you can also track everything that's happening on the press. And then you can also adjust your temperature for the top and the bottom. So if you are like, you know, I really don't want to use the lower heat today, you can turn the lower heat off and just use the top heat. Um, so this press is completely versatile. So as I mentioned with the platens, you can use your hat bill platen for multiple different things, not just hat bills. Um, but I see a lot of people using this press for a lot of different um, application needs. So if you have a left chest and you're wanting to use one of these dimensional products on it, you can fit it. It's about a three inch print space. So anything that you would put that would be three inches wide, you can throw on this press. Um, but the lower heat is phenomenal for um, heat sensitive products. Okay, so you're not going to get like we were talking about that heat box around your garments because you're going to have it the lower heat on it. So you're going to be applying it and you're going to have a lot less heat on top and a little bit more on bottom. So you're going to eliminate any scorching. You can print on really hard to print um, substrates uh, that require really low heat by just sandwiching it with heat instead of just hitting it from the top. So it allows you to have lower heat on both sides to activate the adhesive. Um, gosh, there's so much I can talk about this press for, but do we have questions about it, Stacy? This is almost brand spanking new. It's not even a year old. Um, that press is gonna be $14.95. We did have one question. Um, Joanne was hoping we could advise which press would you, and fabric, would you recommend for safety jackets? So safety jackets, it just depends on the substrate of the jacket. So some substrates have a water resistant coating, which can be very tricky. Um, I'm finding with a lot of customers I work with lately is that everything for this time of year is gonna have a water resistant coating. So you can do um, off the top of my head without looking at it, I would say either if it has to be reflective, we do offer a 3M reflective um, or a subless stop or Gorilla Grip. And Subwoosop is going to give you a full color. Gorilla Grip, grip is going to be a single single color solution. Does that answer? Yep. And, it oh, looks okay. like and the, honestly, the press, I would say anything from your Max and your Auto Clam 
So I would kind of stay away from craft presses because I don't think that they're going to give you the space that you would need for a safety jacket. Those are typically bulkier products, and so and they're typically for adult sizes. So I would go with a 16 by 20 for sure. And then we have another question or recommendation for um, football jerseys. Okay. Uh, which press would you recommend? Cheryl would like to know that one. Okay. So football jerseys, if you're doing full front, just name a number and uh, like a logo in the front or name a number in the front, I again would go 16 by 20 because if you, hypothetically, let me show you. We have, um, here I have a jersey right here to show you. Okay, so this is your standard football jersey, okay? If you're loading this on your A to Z, I'll see if you guys can see this when I load it on. You're going to have to hit it twice due to the size of the bottom platen. Okay, so I can only fit the number and about part of the team name on the platen. So in order to get a logo and then the back, you're gonna need a larger print space, which there's two solutions here. So you can either get a larger press or double your application. So you would do the bottom part first and then print the top part second. So you would really kind of double your production time. Um, so I would always recommend going bigger and either doing the Max Clam or the Auto Open, the Hotronics Auto Open. Is that good? Did you say you had another question on there, Stace, after that? Um, oh, I think it's Karen's asking. Hang on. Oh, okay. Okay, so while the hat press is phenomenal, it's one of my favorite presses because caps are so trendy right now, we do have a lower heat option for some of our presses, okay? So this is gonna be your, what we call a power platen. So this comes in four different sizes. Um, we'll just stick to the 16 by 20 for now. So you have a 16 by 20 platen, and what's gonna happen is you're gonna plug your platen into the back of this head, and then you're gonna plug this part into your press, okay? So it's gonna be a double-headed press. So this would sit, hypothetically, just for reference, next to here. So you're still gonna run your standard um, application on this part of the press, okay? And this is still gonna produce heat. And typically when you're printing top and bottom heat, you're gonna be about 200 degrees on top and about three to 320 on bottom, depending on the application, of course. Um, and then you'll turn this platen on and this is gonna produce the heat to the lower platen. So if you're using heat sensitive garments, um, this is a great product to purchase with your press as an add-on. So it can just sit, a lot of times people will just stick it on like a table next to it, it truly depends on your workspace. Um, but this is gonna control all of your lower heat. So this is an, a plug-in that is compatible with some of our presses. Um, and some it's not because you know if you're swinging away and pulling the head with it, um, but we can walk you through all of that one-on-one -on -one too if this is something that you'd be interested in. And Stacey, I do not have the pricing for these, but I want to say that the this head is anywhere from six to seven hundred dollars, and then each additional platen would be um, whatever that price point is. And then we do offer packages for all four platens and the head um, for the lower heat. And again, that lower heat's great to eliminate scorching. You know, heat transfers have come such a long way where people think of them from like 50 years ago where they're super plasticky, they're bulky, they're heavy on a garment. You have a big heat box around it. They don't last long. And, and heat transfers have completely changed. Um, and so have our garments that we're printing on. And that's why our technology is consistently changing to keep up with times. So... There's a lot of people that are coming out with bamboo or different synthetics, and you can't just throw that on at 350 degrees on your press. So we have worked very hard on our application instructions with your time, your temperature, your pressure, um, and then things as creative as lower heat um, to really help you guys stand out in the industry and give supply your customers with the best products possible. Um, what is uh do we have any other questions i feel like we have a lot of going back and forth uh jennifer just asked and 
Jennifer type in if I'm not reading this correctly. Um, she wants to know if she can use the plug-in heat for a Hattronics hat press without lower heat. So I don't know if she's referencing the power plans you were just showing. So these power plans are only compatible with our flat heat presses uh, and some of them. It is not compatible. I would really put this and recommend this um, power plan on the auto clamp because the auto clamp isn't going to swing and pull away where you would risk pulling that head out of place. Okay. Um, so I would recommend putting it on the auto clamp and just sticking it right next to it and then just power platen. Uh, but it's not compatible on the hat press because this has the curved platen where all of those are flat. Does that make sense? So the only way you would get lower heat on a hat press is to do the 360 hat press. Perfect. And then Carlos just asked a really good question. He just recently bought the hat press, the 360 IQ. He wants to know if it's necessary to have a um, protective cover for the bottom or do you not need one with this press? Okay, so you do not need one. We have designed this unique, like this silicone pad that is built for this press due to the heat. You want to be very careful about what you're covering it with. So this silicone piece that you bought with it, I don't know if you have your press yet or not, but this blue piece would be your pad. So it's protecting your platen already. So it's built in. And then another question, do you know roughly um, the electrical circuits or amps we need for our presses? I feel like they're standard and I was trying to look online for most so of them. 220 with the exception of um, this A to Z is a 120 volt. And I believe the pink press is a 122. I think it's 120 as well. Um, and the rest are 220 or they can do, um, they can convert them if you're like overseas for, I think Europe has different voltages, but 220 standard. And then obviously if you have an air compressor, you would have to um, accommodate for that as well for the air fusion and the dual air fusion. Perfect. I think we're all caught up with questions on my end. Okay, perfect. So, I mean, I know we covered like the kind of bare bones of heat presses here because there's a lot to talk about in an hour. Um, but keep in mind when you're looking at it, your time, temperature, and pressure, it is crucial when heat printing. Um, and all of the presses we have talked about today do offer those functionalities. So Stacy in the comments has put all of the product landing pages. And then you can either click on there and go and request a live demo if you do want some more information from a rep in your area. Um, or you can call in a customer service and they can set you up and just do a phone consult or if you're ready to place an order, they're more than happy to help you with that. Um, so again, 1-800-4, the number four, uh, stalls. And then their email is info at stalls.com. So depending on how you would rather communicate either via phone or email, you can reach out to them um, and they'll be able to help you with that.